Hi there, I'm Karen Marie, and this is Psyched Up for Sunday, May 3rd, 2020. So the guidance I've been getting today, um, or this week for today, let me let me just stop for those of you who may have not seen these videos before. This is number six in um, a weekly series that I started the last week of M March. Um, I've been doing professional psychic readings since 1988. I've been a practicing Buddhist since 1984. Um, so this, my spiritual practice is definitely the framework for which I do everything in my life, but definitely my um, psychic practice. So I do want to touch a little bit on, there's a lot of people that get freaked out just with the word psychic and the words tarot and, okay, so you can replace the word psychic for just intuitive Um and intuition is something that we all possess. Some of us possess it to a greater degree. The volume's really turned up. Other people's volume's turned down. Can't hear it as much. Everybody can work to turn their volume up and be more intuitive. Uh, and just like anybody could learn to play an instrument or beat a drum. And then some people are just going to be extra gifted at it. So, um, so that's what I want to say about that. So I grew up Episcopal. So I grew up with a spiritual Christian background. Um, so I understand that as well. So, um, and I, I loved what I found in um, Christianity and the teachings of what I understood that Jesus was saying. So, um, but people get freaked out with tarot cards and just, especially if they've come from a religious programming where it's been, they've been told that um, this stuff is of the devil or um, something to be feared. People are afraid I'm going to tell them when they're going to die. I never get when people are going to die. I don't get when people are going to be born either. Um, so it's, um, it's, I think that's mystic. Most of my readings are centered more about right now, like helping people get clear on right now. So that's what I've been guided to do today. A uh, first, something I've never done before because I've just started doing these. Um, so in, if you were to come to see me to do a private reading, we would start with your astrology, um, looking at your birth chart and then the, the current transits. So the thing I, I, last week's video was all about upcoming retrogrades and I went into detail about the astrology. So I don't want to do that again today, but I do want to touch on two really major days um, this week, which is on Tuesday, the nodes shift. They've been in Cancer and in Capricorn for the last year and a half, working out the is issues of the divine feminine and the di divine masculine and getting the balance there. Um, and they're going to be moving into Gemini and Sagittarius. So whole new themes. And you may feel like something shift on Tuesday with that. Um, Gemini rules the head. Um, it's also the twins. And so there could be a lot of just for the next year and a half, media, communication changes, uh, just a lot of new inventive ideas coming. Um, so that's a big shift coming. And then on Thursday morning early here in Austin, it's going to be like 5.45 a.m. And so really Wednesday night before you go to bed, the full moon is coming. And the full moon will be in Scorpio. So full moons bring out the lunatic. It brings out your intuition. It's heightened since no matter what sign the moon is in, it's a heightened time for intuition. When it's in Scorpio, it's even more heightened. Scorpio is one of the most psychic signs. And so uh, you can have some real psychic downloads coming Wednesday night when you're sleeping, Thursday night, during the day. Like, I start feeling transits beforehand. I'll feel the full moon's effects beforehand. You can feel them afterwards. So uh, anytime you get a date, well, this is going to be direct that day, or that's going to go retrograde that day, you can start feeling things beforehand. You can feel it after. You look all around that date for things to shift. Um, but the full moon in Scorpio is about revealing secrets, too. So you might... We may see in the media, you know, secrets revealed this week, especially because Gemini rules the media. Um, but also in relationships, um, we might have secrets revealed, personal lives. Um, S Scorpio has to do with boundaries and setting boundaries, and it also can be severing things. And so this full moon may very, very well be you deciding to sever something. Um, my little puppy here, I have to show you because she's looking on me. Isn't she not cute? Or then she's like, mm, this is Chloe. 
but she's over here licking me away. Um, everybody else is asleep where I'd have her somewhere else right now. Please chew on your toy. Um, so, um, and she's distracting me too. All right. So where was I talking about the Scorpio full moon and severing things and boundaries? So this could be a time where, um, you decide to stop something, a behavior, a habit, you know, like it could be like a drawing a line in the sand with, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore with other people, with yourself. So that, that, those kind of issues I really expect to be coming up around the full moon. I already feel that coming up for me. I'm already deciding something I'm going to really shift and change around the full moon coming up. So I'm already sort of offering it up, uh, in preparation and, you know, um, so, uh, Chloe wants to draw a card and say it's that moving to the next steps. So that's what I'm going to talk about next is the tarot. Okay, so I use a non traditional non traditional tarot deck. I really can't talk. Today has been off all day. Like I woke up early because of this little thing, and then couldn't get back to sleep, and then finally did get back to sleep. And when I got up, I just felt out of rhythm. I didn't get to my chanting, which is usually was something I do first in the day till. It was afternoon before I sat down and chant. And I'm one of those, okay, I'm going to chant wherever, whenever I get there. Once I got there, I chanted for two and a half hours today. But um, it took me a while to get there. I just felt so out of it and so lethargic and so sad and just like moving like I had depression all over me. And um, when I sat down to chant, I started unloading all the feelings and realized, that's right, I'm empathic. And so when I don't get up and get charged up before the world gets going, it's not good for me. So it, to me, it was a personal note to self. Get up early. Get your spiritual practice in before the world gets going. <laughs> so I can, Because otherwise, I'm just feeling everybody's feelings and like, oh, my God, I was just crying for the world today when I was chanting. So uh, once I cleared out the stuff that wasn't mine, I felt a whole lot better. Uh, it's still been like off today. And so if anybody else is feeling like that way, I just feel like I've been kind of like moving through quicksand or something. So anyway, um, it's late. Again, it's after 10. Um, I hope that these things that have, I was guided by my guides to start these two years ago and I procrastinated a long time about it and finally got the guidance in January to start them at the end of March. This was before Corona hit. And so I'm going to do these every Sunday, even if I'm getting them done at midnight and getting them out on Monday, because I was procrastinating and not doing them at all for two years. So I'm going to take what I'm doing right now as good enough. Note to self for anybody else out there. Um, cause the Scorpio can be very self-critical. Scorpions hide under the rock, like the scorpion tail, like it can be up this week. Like you might get stung, um, with the scorpionic energy with the full moon, um, this week. So, and then next week we have three planets moving retrograde. We have, uh, Pluto's already retrograde. It went le retrograde last week. And then we'll have Venus and Saturn and Jupiter all turning retrograde. So, these are interesting times, right? So I'm not going to go into next week's astrology. So what I've been guided to do today is to do a psychic reading using my tarot cards. I use the Astro Zen Tarot. They're unlike, I mean, they're pretty easy. Like here's the fighting card. Pretty easy to tell, you know, what the cards mean. I don't look at, I also don't do cards reversed because I channel with them. So, so from the beginning when I first started using tarot cards, it was because I was told by a handful of psychics that I was very psychic and even was told I was going to be a psychic professionally by a palmist when I was 19 and a business major at UT. And I thought, BS. <laughs> so sure enough. So I'm going to shuffle the cards. And the intention I'm going to set, just like I would be doing in a personal reading, is for the highest good and for whatever uh, my client needs to know right now. Uh, whatever they need to see in here. I usually start with general readings without them telling me much and I see what comes up. So so my intention today is to, to appeal to someone who's going to be watching this video and I hope that all that you, all of you that turn, geez Louise, all of you that tune in will be able to get something from this. So when I get in preparation to do readings, one of the things I do is try to move my mental body and my emotional body to the side so I can just be a clear channel so um, we'll see what someone out there needs to know today. And um, I'm not going to show you my layout because I haven't figured out how to have a, 
you know, to split screen and show a camera on what I'm doing. I'll figure that out. All these pieces, as my God said, just get it started and we can buff and polish as we go along. So these videos should get better and better each week and as time progresses, as I find some media savvy folks to help me and such. So um, if you want to check out my website, it's KarenMariePsychic.com, K-A-R-E-N-M-A-R-I-E. P-S-Y-C-H-I-C dot com. Okay. All right, let's see. This will be interesting for me because I've never done like a general reading for whoever may be tuning in. Um, and I'm sure this is going to be more than one person because I want everybody to get something out of it. So I'm just going to go with this and see. I didn't even practice this because I wanted to just really let it be um, clear and free. All right. So I'm going to put the cards out here to the side first and where I can see them. And I'll pick them up one at a time and um, show them um, as I'm talking about them. So you have to get a, like I said, a private reading with me. To Although I'm not doing those right now. COVID, I'm being COVID savvy and doing all my readings over the phone, which the majority of my readings are over the phone anyway. I have lots of clients all over the country. Um, my Cali clients, I love them because I'm a night owl, so I can do their readings. <laughs> it can be midnight, it's 10 p.m. for them. It's a late re reading for them, but it's like, okay, I've done that once. Usually an 8 p.m. reading my time, 9 p.m. reading, 10 p.m. start time, my time. Works for Cali clients. All righty. I love doing this work. There's nothing scary about it. I'm... You know, my Buddhist practice, I mean, Buddhism can scare people too if they're raised with strong Christian values that say nothing other than Jesus Christ is the way. It can be scary to find other ways. Um, I mean, we have a big universe, right? We have an unlimited source. It makes sense that there'd be more than one path to get there and connect. Um, so this is one. I consider this spiritual. I consider this of the light, of the divine. Um, that's... You know, I, that's the framework I live my life. Um, I don't account, encounter psychic attacks because of that, I believe. Um, so, all that, okay. There we go. Okay, so this is the first card, representing the overall situation. So it's the totality card. This is throwing yourself completely into something. So this is making a decision, I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw everything I have into it. So it's representing the overall situation. So it's not just... This can change everything in your life. Like if you're completely making a decision, it can change how you look. It can change where you live. It can change where you work, what you drive, all that kind of stuff. So um, so the totality card. All right. That's the overall situation. So this is the card representing the person asking the question. So this is for one of you guys out there. It's the past life card. So this card talks about that it's a, a timing in your life where you're running into and encountering past life people. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're in a group that feels familiar. It can be a negative group, like, God, I'm so tired of this repeated pattern. Or you can meet someone like, I know, I know you. But So this is representing someone who's trying to tune in to more than just right here and now. Like, why am I here? What is, like... What is the expanse of our soul's growth? Okay. So the bridge that crosses right now, or like right now in time, is the adventure card. So this card depicts this person like walking into the light, right? So it talks about, this is about not have you don't, they don't know what's there. They just know this is the way to step in. So it's a way, this card talks about all you have to figure out is this one day, this one minute. Where do I feel like? I feel guided to put my energies today, right? If you're nutted up in your emotional body in fear and worry, if you're, you know, a lot of people are getting headaches and stuff because they're so stressed out. Um, I've talked about this in almost every video. It's so important to do spiritual practice. And the most basic spiritual practice is just to breathe deeply in and out. Because if you can clear out the frenetic fear and the worry and all the and the, then you can get the clear download of what today you're supposed to be guided to do. All right, so I put two cards out in certain positions. So these two cards together represent 
the conscious focus or what your mind might be thinking of. All right. So I'm going to separate them. This card comes up in so many women's readings. So this card depicts this woman, right? She's sitting there fantasizing, seeing this fabulous dream. Like, see this? Oh, wonderful fantasy. It's called, it's just the dream card. Um, so this card talks about a relationship where you can see the potential. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. But the reality is this. <laughs> She's sitting here by herself dreaming about this potential. So this is a lot, comes up a lot in readings where people are settling in their relationships and they're hooked into the highest aspects that they can see. Psychic folks, healers do this all the time, can tap into the highest potential of someone else. But if they're not bringing it out right now, if you're not seeing it in the here and now, right now today, it's not good enough. It's not going to be like helpful in your life. So this also could be talked about going after a dream, which again, you're not taking action towards. You're just thinking about it. So either one of the, probably some of both of that's. All right. And so the other thing with this is the participation card. So putting them together, this is people working together. This is things coming together. So these can be separate issues. It could be like, oh, I got my relationship set over here, but oh, this is coming together over here. Or it can be thinking, one of the hits I'm getting is that a fear of like, the relationship's not working for me, but I'm afraid of losing the family or all the connections or the friends that's connected to this relationship. That's so important to me. I don't want to end up, or maybe it's the children that are involved or something like that. So that's, that's the hit I'm getting that they're, they're thinking about all these people that connect into, to them. Um, right. Okay. So then underneath the scene, the card that represent the cards that represent like the foundation or kind of what's going on underneath the scene. I always see this as something that gets packed out pictured later or it's also where karmic debris shows up okay it's these two cards these are actually no debris cards so this is good this card the maturity card is the card that comes up when it's about self-care so the it's a so important to drop that oxygen mask to yourself first right take care of yourself in action words <laughs> not just like in talk but where you really care for yourself. You're feeding yourself healthy, really good food. You're drinking lots of water. You're not putting poisons into your system. There's lots of poisons out there, right? So this is about changing up, loving yourself to a, a bigger degree. This is the going with the flow card, which is like not knowing where things are going, but if you can breathe deeply and just enjoy the right now and be grateful for everything that you do have right now, it makes it just really easy. So this is about like, well, I don't know where we're going, but I can drill down and start working on self-care. I talked about that last week in the video because with all the retrograde planets, it's really about doing a lot of inner work this whole year, the rest of the year. So we may not be able to go forward and we may have to just like, okay, float on the raft. Um, these are the recent past cards. So it's the creativity card and the awareness card. So this would be some sort of aha moment, realization, connected to something creati create, cre creative or creativity in the recent past. So I feel like it has to do with just really getting how talented you are or really getting, oh, wow, I really am good at this. Or um, here's a new idea I could have. Like, there's a difference between an idea, a good idea, and something that feels channeled, like something that just is like a inspired idea. This feels like inspired idea territory. Like, so I feel like a lot of people out there have been getting inspired creative ideas. Um, I feel like they're a roadmap and that they're be to be paid attention to and pursued. It's not just, oh yeah, that'd be a great idea. No, I feel like there's like, especially if they keep coming back or if you were just thinking about, you know, maybe I should um, pull out my paints and maybe paint some or maybe take an art class. And all of a sudden, you know, you see an advertising for an art studio or someone, you hear someone passing talk about, well, I just took my art, la, la, la. You know, that's a confirmation. So the universe will confirm for you if you ask that question, universe, show me, guide me, make it really loud and clear, confirm my direction. It'll bring that back for you. All right, near future. This looks kind of gnarly, I have to say. Okay, this is the suppression card. 
This is the comparison card. This is when you're nutted up in all your emotional debris. This is also when you're like deeply heavy or you're just stuck and you don't, you're, you're about to implode, right? Um, this is comparing yourself to other people. Like, okay, you're an oak, but you're like, oh, well, I'm not as thin as the bamboo. You know, that kind of crap. So you may be causing yourself a lot of stress by comparing yourself to others right now. So this is a, like, please don't do that. Like, and recognize that we all have our unique paths and missions and our own divine guidance can download right in the middle of the storm, the eye of the storm and, and show us what, where we need to go. There's a lot of this angst. There's a lot of misery. There's a lot of people really feeling horrible. Today, one of the things I was hitting on when I was chanting and crying about was how many people that are alone right now and quarantined were already feeling rough because they don't have anybody in their life and now they're shut down. And so a lot of that, a lot of drug addiction has been, my sense has been that's really escalated. Like whatever people turn to, to relieve their stress. And then they're realizing, oh, this is not working to relieve my stress. So that may be a lot of what gets cut with this new moon. I mean, uh, the full moon here this week, there may be people saying no more. I can't do this. I've got to do something different than this. This is not the solution to my problem. Okay. These two cards represent the same person asking the question, just like the past life card did. This is the, this would be the tower card in a traditional tarot deck. It's the thunderbolt card. And this is the abundance card. Anybody experiencing a total breakthrough or break shift in your abundance right now? I mean, there is plenty around. That's the truth of the abundance card. You may feel like the whole world is crashing down and, and these patriarchal structures that we've built that are not working, the systems in our government, the systems in our life that have not worked are being brought up. The towers of battle are falling. If you have built something not on solid ground, not on a solid foundation. I'm talking about things with yourself, relationships, work. Like it was faulty, kind of shaky to the start. That's kind of what this feels like. Um, I'm also getting earthquakes with this right now. Um, I'm really feeling the earthquakes coming. Especially with Uranus and Taurus and v like everything's starting to get, I'm just, yeah, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling literal rumblings um, with this too. But people being just extra pissy and just blah, fiery and like, because this world is changing. The paradigms of as we have known it are different now. And they'll not, they're not going back. We're moving into something unknown, new. Okay. So these cards represent your environment. This would not be you. This would be someone in your environment, your significant other, your neighborhood, your work life, the, where you live, the world around you, somehow, somebody in your life. Okay, we've got the rebel card. Bre somebody breaking through. I don't care what boundaries you set for me. I'm not going to do it. Well, we, we know we have a lot of that going on, right? <laughs> I'm not going to wear my mask. I refuse to be locked down. No, no, you can't make me. A lot of that going on. The traveling card. So this is, um, I feel like this is also could be someone who's taken off in your life and saying, I'm going on a trip. I'm getting out of here. I got to go. I can't stay here any longer. Um, I'm drawn somewhere else. I've got to follow my heart to something else. Um, I feel like these people that are breaking through right now, they're, they're moving towards something better. They're not just running away. It feels like, like the breakups right now, you like, you may see on the full moon, what's going to be happening in your relationship. Mercury doesn't go retrograde till the 13th next week, 12th, 13th, depending on where you are. Um, and then it stays retrograde till June 25th or so. That's when it goes direct. That's when you'll feel forward motion. And then it doesn't come out of shadow till the end of July. So we're all, this is a longer period than usual for this. The last time that Venus was retrograde in Gemini was in 2012, eight years ago. So it, it takes eight years to go through all the signs. And so think back, May and June of 2012, what was going on in your life then in terms of your relationships? Venus also is where you put your energy, where you put your passion. What went down? Chances are you might 
see a similar theme emerge. April 10th is when Venus went to in its shadow. That is the point where themes started to sh show up. The preview of coming attractions for the Venus retrograde has already been playing. Um, and like I said, we'll really feel on the 13th, like new, the full moon this week can be real illuminating. Um, if you're going to start something new or end something, this is the time to do it. Like finish up whatever you're going to do before you go to bed Wednesday night. So when you wake up Thursday morning, you're in a new space. I, that's the timing that I would suggest to people who want to take a ride on this full moon and use it to be able to release something and offer it up. Um, don't be surprised if you get surprise secrets revealed both in your personal life, you may have something come up within yourself that surprises you. You may have an old memory, something surface. Okay. The next cards are hopes and fears. They're the change card. And this card represents the integration card. And I see this as the psychic, someone who can integrate their intuition into all that they're doing, which is what I do with my life. I integrated in my parenting with my children, and I have six of them. I homeschooled them all by using my intuition and trusting theirs. Um, so anyway... And then this is the change card. So this would be people really fr afraid of listening to their intuition. And at the same time, hoping, really, can I really just tune into myself and follow that and everything will be okay? Uh, my life experiment so far is saying, uh, yeah. In fact, the more you surrender to your inner voice and follow that, the better your life just keeps getting. The change card, people are afraid of change. They're also hoping for change. Like, it can be both. Hopes and fears can be flip sides of the same thing. Like, you can be afraid of success. Um, and you can be afraid of failure. You know, it could be the same thing. <laughs> flip sides of the same coin. But to me, this is about fearing things that you don't know coming, right? And so, again, if you, it's, um, the more you surrender to the light, the less darkness there is, right? The, the more you turn the light on, less you're afraid of the dark. And so I'm going to use that analogy for turning on your spiritual lights. And with the Sag going into Sag, um, with the South Node going into Sag, and Gemini in the North Node, there may be all kinds of people exploring new kinds of religions um, that they hadn't before. Um, open to new philosophies, new, open to new ideas. Okay, so I put a lot of cards out as the outcome because I don't feel like it's just one finished thought. So the first one is the master card. Uh, I, I feel like the outcome is always a continuing journey. We're never to da there at the end of a reading. So the first card is the master card. So this is about mastery over yourself. This is about what did you come here to do on this planet? Are you doing your mission? This is These are the times to step up into your mission. One of the astrologers that I follow said, you were born to be here now. Maybe feel intensive. We are birthing something new here. It is not pleasant in the birth canal. Um, for someone who's birthed six babies, I can tell you. Once they get out, it's beautiful. New baby. The birthing itself, mm -mm, not so pretty. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. We're birthing something new. We're birthing something new within us. We're birthing something new as a culture. But our whole world is birthing something new. Okay. So this card's coming up. So this card depicts a lion that's in with a pack of sheep. So the story behind this card is this is... This lion gets lost as a cub and falls in with a pack of sheep. So his whole life, he grows up around sheep. And what are the sheep doing? They're eating, and they're shitting, and they're sleeping, and that's about it. And the lion is restless. He doesn't know why. He looks around him, and nobody else seems to be having problems, and he just doesn't know why he's feeling so restless. Till one day, another lion spots him and says, Dude, come here. Takes him down to the nearby water source, and he's like, Oh, okay, I'm a lion. I get it. Like he sees his reflection. He sees that he's not a sheep. So this is the story of those of you that are trying to make yourself be something that you're not. It will never work. No matter how hard you try to put on that sheep skin, a lion can never be a sheep. Okay. The guilt card is coming up next. Now I'm looking up, coming up on 30 minutes. Looks like that's where my uh, tape ends and starts a new one. So um, this will be going into a second video here. Um, so make sure you uh, watch the second one so you keep the story going. Okay, the guilt card is coming up. It's also just pulling your hair out and not being able to get, get out of your head. I mean, one of the best vacations you can take right now is from your head. Like, really stop trying to figure things out. Put your mind down. Breathe deeply. Make yourself laugh. Do something to nurture yourself. And, like, get out of your head because, you know... We have to really be open for inspired guidance right now to figure this stuff out. I really think otherwise we're going to make ourselves some cray cray. Also, there may be people who have really done things they feel bad about. And, you know, 
there's guilt, healthy guilt makes you change your behavior. All righty. The next card is the We Are the World card. So in the traditional tarot deck, this would be like the, the Wheel of Fortune. This really says like anything's possible, everything's possible. We're all one. We're all on this planet together. Um, so it's an optimism card. It's like really think bigger, think better. Like this is a time to like know that the universe is unlimited and know that you're unlimited and that even though the things that you've seen them and known are kind of crumbling, there's a whole new paradigm being built that's really about one globe, that we're all on this one planet together and we all really need to work together. I really see that as the theme that just keeps coming up again and again and again. Okay, the slowing down card is coming. This is the great tor tortoise. So I feel like whatever these changes and stuff, it's not happening quickly. Like, um, you know, the great tortoise moves super slow. And so things, this is not, you don't have to do things quickly. With all these retrogrades, it gives us plenty of time to reflect, review, go back within. If you're trying to go forward right now, you can really frustrate yourself because the retrogrades are not a time to start new things. So, um, success card is coming up. So again, this is like the tiger glance dancing on the globe. And again, here's the global issues and that we really have success when we take in mind that we're all on this globe, like without the foundation of the earth that we're on, we are not alive. Right. You know, um, but I feel like there's some good things coming for the planet. Um, and, and it feels like to me, there's also, it just feels like good news. There's some good news, celebration, things that we can like, ha, ah, celebrate. And it's around the bend. So it's a little, it's not, you know, I'd say maybe two, three, four months, like it, later this year, maybe there's something to celebrate. I'm hoping that's the election. Okay. So the no thingness card is coming right after that. Maybe it is because here we go. We have the success and then there's the no thingness card. This is not the death card. This is like a blank canvas where there is no thing on it. So this is um, a new beginning. So after success, there's a new beginning. I, to me, I'm going to call that that's a change in our uh, president at the election. Um, since I'm doing this general reading and it feels like that in terms of like timing, if I was doing a, a personal reading for somewhere and it showed up in that position, I would say this feels like later this year. Um, and then there's the Buddha card and the receptivity card. So it's really about sort of all of us getting more spiritual. I really feel like more people are p picking up spiritual practices for real. Good thing because we need it. Like, because we're all one collective, right? We're, we're all connected. Um, and so any one person that raises their vibration raises the vibration of everyone around them in those lives that you touch. And so the spiritual practice that I do, chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, um, 